So I've had a lot of requests for updates on our water management systems here at Rockpile. Our swales, Leaky Weir, Kangaroo Creek, Beaver Dam, the dam, right? Now I just want to set the expectations so we don't get too carried away, right? I'm standing in the bottom of our dam. And this hasn't been full since 2022. So you might remember videos uh, that we did around that time where this area and the creek line was all flooded. It was like a big wetlands right through there. The dam was overflowing over there. Uh, where I'm standing, for example, uh, was just under my knees in, in the water height. And now, well, it's bone dry. So uh, before we moved here, we moved here in 2020. Before we moved here, the average rainfall for York was about 500 mils a year. And we thought that's, that's, that's pretty good, okay, for, for where we are anyway. So then in 2021, we had a really wet year. We got about 615 mils of rain in 2021. And we thought, this is great. Look at it, there's water everywhere, right? And then, you know, we made the videos of how much water there was and we were really, really happy. And then the rainfall started decreasing. In 2022, we got 420 mils. So remember, 2021, 615. 2022, 420. Then in 2023, we got 340. And 2024, we got 353 mils. So 615 to 340 was our lowest. That's like a big difference. And that really affects the, oh, I tell you, it just affects the, the look and the feel of this place. So off the back of all that rain that we got uh, towards the end of 2021, come 2022, we had this idea to make these water systems, right? Like the Beaver Dam and Kangaroo Creek, for example. And we thought, this is great. Lots of rain. We'll do the little water systems as an experiment, hoping in the future years, as the years go by, that they get better and better and better. We made this little catchment area, right? And it held life. There was tadpoles breeding in it. It was like, great. This little water system was like awesome. It was like its own little ecosystem. It was like, we were so proud of it. So we haven't been down to Beaver Dam since 2023, right? So let's go have a look together and see how it's held up with those couple of years of drought. Wowzers, okay. So first impressions are the trees we put in have grown. You might remember those trees, they were like, they're only like six inches tall, you know, 150 mil high. They've actually done well. I think a couple of haven't made it because we put logs around and there's, one, two, with no, with logs, with no tree, but yeah, wow. All nice, fresh, oh, they've been nibbled on too. Maybe that's the kangaroos. And then we look in the, in, in Beaver Dam. I tell you what, it almost looks exactly like the day we built it, apart from the long grass. <laughs> so you can just see there's a little bit of green coming through in the bottom there. Because we had 20 mils of rain the other last week. And I think that's just triggered a little bit of growth. One, two, three, maybe four, four blades of grass, maybe five in there. Oh no, eight. What am, th what am I looking at here? So, you remember we chucked some straw, some hay in there, and then we put some dirt with a combination of a few logs in there. Hey. All right. So what I'm looking at here is the dirt is still good on this side. On the outgoing side of the water, it sort of washed the dirt away from between the logs, right? But uh, all in all, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Considering we haven't touched it 
since the day that we built it back in 2022. So my final thoughts on Beaver Dam project. I like it a lot. It, it functioned well. It obviously made a difference for the trees on that side. Not so much this side. There's only two that survived on this side, but you know, 90% of them survived on that side. So that tells me something about the water maybe seeped in more that way than back this way. Um, now you can see the advantage of these systems. You know, if you had multiple of these, right, and they all held water, and it's putting that water back into the landscape to help growth. But you need the water. Without the water, you're a bit buggered. I'm happy. I'm happy with it, given our lack of rain. So the other system we did at Kangaroo Creek, we done a leaky weir style. It is over there, around the corner, down a bit, and it's very overgrown. Let's see if we can get in there. And we'll try and give you give you an update on what that looks like and a bit of an overall assessment of what we what we think of the project. That's a, big, that's a big tree that's fallen down, isn't it? Uh. All right. So that's another thing that happens after dry years is you get a lot of, uh, a lot of trees dropping. You know, that one's got to be 600 mil round at the, what you can see there. Is that our next firewood tree? <laughs> so the question is, which system is better, all right? We'll call it the Beaver Dam, where we just were. And here we are at Kangaroo Creek. Now keep in mind that we built these two, those two systems differently to each other. So Beaver Dam was basically uh, the creek line and we put some old hay bales in there. We covered it with dirt and branches, okay? So the idea was the hay would stop the silt, the silt would build up and create like the, the dam effect. But then over here at Kangaroo Creek, we did it a bit different. We put branches in uh, from the go, so no hay, but then we covered those branches with geofabric, that, you know, that textile stuff that you use for drainage. So we covered that and then we covered it with rocks and dirt, thinking that the geofab would help catch the silt and create the dam effect. And also we didn't plant any trees um, on this one, so we can't give you that sort of comparison for tree growth. But there's rocks on this one, and you know how much I like rocks. All right, let's go have a look. Wow, okay. Funnily enough, this one looks exactly how it got left as well. Let's just head down in there. This bring back, brings back memories of when you threw the chainsaw at me and I dropped it in the water. They throw it to me. Just start it and throw it to me. <laughs> Chuck it. Oh, I thought you meant to catch it. <laughs> so let's get a bit of a close-up here. Thank you. So we got a few little, uh, you can probably just see that. There's a, <laughs> there's a little bit of green in there. I'll tell you what, it's the most green that rock piles got at the moment, right? You can see all the rocks have held up well. You can see here, this is where we used the, the geofabric underneath the rocks and the dirt. And that's that big main log that we put in as like the lowest point. So as the water flows over, it kind of doesn't wash it out. And then there's a few more patches of green just growing down there. So I just want to talk about the two different construction methods, like I mentioned before. Uh, this would be my preferred method, even though it's not 100% natural because we did use that geofabric in there as like a membrane underneath the rocks and the dirt, right? But this one, I feel, would instantly hold more water than the beaver dam straight away because 
all the dirt has washed out between the branches in beaver dam. So as the water comes up, it's just gonna flow straight through. Whereas this one has really held its shape. And if we got a bit of rain, I'm confident that this would fill up quite well. Even though this is more effort because there's, you know, rocks, dirt, you know, a, a big log there, that was like pretty heavy, you know, to get in. But with effort comes reward. So I think if we were to do more, we would kind of go down this route for construction method. I'm pretty happy with it. I like it. I just wish I was knee deep in water right now because that would be cool as. We got a lot of rocks, haven't we? So we didn't plant this one out like the other one. Um, a few reasons, we didn't have trees at the time that we built this. We didn't really think about it, right? Probably more to be honest. But in hindsight, it would have been good to whack maybe like half a dozen, you know, trees or bushes around this area at the same time that we built it because it would give a good comparison to Beaver Dam and you saw how well those trees had gone. Like, I'm just curious as to how well these trees would have gone if we had planted it. So, I suppose a bit of hindsight advice. If you're gonna build something like this, right, plant a bit of stuff. So following years down the track, you can come back and go, you know, look at that, like the, the landscape has held water, and the trees are growing, or the shrubs are benefiting from the excess water. So that would be probably my, you know, bit of advice really. And our last system that we built in 2022 was our big swale. Now that was a project and a half, right? So that's that way, half a kilometer that way. <laughs> so let's try and get out of here, right? And we'll head up to there and we'll check out the big swale. So we are off contour ditch and our on contour swale have been our best performing water system by far. Hands down, the best. So Amanda done an update on this a little while ago, but let's just do a quick little walk along and uh, explain a few things on the way. The plan this year is we want to incorporate some more trees and shrubs and fruit bearing trees along this swale. Uh, some nitrogen fixing, some fruit, you know, the whole like understory, overstory canopy thing. Because these trees, given the lack of rain that we've had for the past two years, these, are actually going really good, especially on this side over here. These trees, there's like so many along here, you know, like, like this was only tube stock, you know, this was only, only this big. It was, and now it's, you know, it's six foot high. Oh, hang on. Six foot two high, because I'm only six foot and a bit, you know. And look at that one. This trunk on that one is twice the size of that one. And it's more bushier, it's higher, so it, it's a proven fact that swales are tree growing systems, right? And this is just proof of how well that's grown for no rain. And this has never been irrigated, ever. Never been watered. And it, where I'm standing here, uh, this is the level sill spillway. Oh, don't try and say that too fast. Level sill spillway, it's never overflowed. The swale filled up maybe once, maybe twice. I think definitely once because I was, because we were like walking in it. All right, that was like, that was the proudest moment, especially because, you know, you've dug something on contour and it fills with water and you know how water finds its own level. And it was just a big stream of water. Like, you know, however long that is, 60, 80 meters long of water. It was like, man, I just want rain. Just want some water. This is like the homestead and water. You can do so much. So these are the updates on the systems, the dam, Empty. Beaver Dam, held up well, but empty. Kangaroo Creek, looks great, but empty. And the swale, with all the growth. So here's hoping that 2025 brings us better rainfall and we can keep building and improving our systems. See you next time.